Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. For this tutorial, we are going to be creating some gorgeous, and I mean they're gorgeous, aren't they darling, wax paper envelopes. Now to create this, I was inspired by these little envelopes I got from um, an eBay seller. They came, my little stamps came in these little envelopes. So I thought, how can we create something similar to that? Uh, I know those are kind of vintage and I wanted a vintage like look on my envelopes. I have a video tutorial on how I did these. Now to create this look on wax paper, you're going to need first some inexpensive wax paper. I purchased this one at Walmart for $1.96. You might find it cheaper at Dollar Tree. I don't know. Um, but you just need wax paper. The cheaper the better. You're also going to need a very old cooking pot. Um, preferably metal um, or galvanized because once you start to dip your wax paper into it you're going to have wax residue on your pot. So if you have a tea fall one, just be prepared that that is going to be on your pot and you're going to probably have to use some Goo Gone to clean it up. So that is why I said make sure that your pot is one that you're never going to use again other than for tea dyeing, coffee dyeing, and crafting. So you're going to take some instant coffee and you're going to make brew some very strong coffee. It has to be super hot. You're going to put your oven at 290 and you're going to grab your cookie sheet and put it aside. Once you have that, you're going to need either some clothes pins or if you have these little silicone fingertips, those work great as well. The reason I say that is because you're going to get burnt and I don't want anyone to tell me, may I got burnt doing this project. So either silicone fingertips or clothes pins. Ha ha. You're going to cut your wax paper at eight and a half, which is the standard width for paper. And you're going to dip it into that hot and remove it from the stove top if you can. Every now and then, if you're doing multiple sheets, the temperature will drop. And once you, your temperature drops, you're going to notice because instead of um, having it saturated, the coffee saturate within the wax paper it's going to look blotchy and it's going to look like it's splattered water on top because the wax is of resistance so what you're going to do is either your clothespins or your fingertips you're going to submerge it into that coffee hot coffee and you're going to get both sides get it in there really good remove it and place it on your cookie sheet and put it in the oven to bake for one or two minutes. Keep an eye on it. You may have to flip it over a little, but it shouldn't take too long. Remove it, and it's going to have a glossy look to it. That's okay. Within seconds, that gloss will lose its shine, and it's going to look like this. Now, if it's cold, like I said, it's going to look blotchy or like splatters because the coffee is going to sit on top of the wax. This is what the wax looks like. So you can see the difference between this and this. We want this. Make it look like it's aged when it's not. Once you have that, then you're going to take an old book sheet, um, music notes, whatever you want. And it doesn't have to be old. You can make it old by dipping it in coffee. I found hot coffee is better than cold coffee. You get a better um, appearance, vintage appearance on it. So this has been sitting in coffee. I baked it, and now I'm ready to do this. So what I use is I use glue sticks, and uh, let me get this one. And I also use my sewing machine to get the sewing stitches around. So with our glue sticks right now, they're on sale at Walmart. Let me move my fingers. I don't think I need to work with those, right? So you're going to take your glue stick and you're going to figure out how you want your, um, your envelope. Now, measure your paper and that's the width that you're going to use for your wax paper. And I'm leaving about a quarter inch seam on each side so that I can get a really nice, really nice edges. Now you can use your scoreboard. The only problem is if you're going to use your scoreboard because you want to score your pocket, um, is that you need to be very gentle when scoring because it is um, 
very delicate, very thin, and it'll crack and break. So just, I just fold it by hand. I eyeball it. You can use your corner rounder and round your corners if you choose that. Um, so before you do anything, go ahead and do that if that's what you want. Now, once you have this and you figured out this is what I want, see on this one, I have the words Christ is there. Uh, Christ is in Christ, there is no east or west. Very strong message there. In Christ, there is no east or west. And you can have it in the inside, like I've chosen to do this. Now, this one has Mod Podge. See the difference? And this one does not. You can choose either one. If you're going to use Mod Podge, let it dry very well um, because otherwise it becomes sticky and it's going to stick. And you don't want the sticky. You want to make sure it's fully dry before you start working with it. But it almost gives it like a leathery look and it's really cool looking. Now, so if I decide that I want Christ is made the sure foundation, another strong message, um, we can have that there and fold this one up like this so that when I open up my flap, I see that message. Or I can flip it and then I can do it this way so that message is on the inside there of you can't see that one really well. That's why I like it the other way. But you can choose however you want your message to appear. So once you've decided that, take your um, Lord is Lord of our life, God of our salvation. I like the other one. I think it was a good message. You want to use um, glue sticks. You don't want to use um, liquid glue because it'll be runny and you can see that on your wax paper on the other side. And this way you're not going to see that. And of course, you can use Mod Pod, but again, um, gotta let that sit and dry. Because I'm running it through my sewing machine, I really am okay with the glue sticks, and it works just as great, which is what I've used on my other ones. So you want to make sure you cover every corner of this paper. That's very important. You're going to use your brayer and or your bone folder. So it's completely covered. Now I'm going to put it in here. And you can trim it um, if you don't like the way it looks. Like I know I got to trim up here because when I ripped it off from the packaging I got one side a little wonky just go ahead and use your brayer now this is a Hobby Lobby brayer I don't recommend this one it's a paper studio brand these pieces come off so go ahead and get that really good both sides get the edges good and if you don't trust your brayer get your bone folder if you have any air pockets this is the perfect time to get it done Okay, flip it, do the same thing. Now, if you have a little air bubble in there, what you can do is take a little pin and pop it and get the air bubble out. And release it just pin it and just kind of squeeze down like you would with a, a zit all right so then you have that the next thing you do you can trim any extra little wonky edges like this one here it's a little wonky so we'll trim that off just a tad bit and I'm gonna probably do the same over here best that I can like so and voila Oh, can't get you off my desk. Come on. All right. And then here's where you want your bone folder. I mean, not your bone folder, your scoreboard. Gently, if you can, if you don't want to eyeball it. Fold it over to where you want your flap. And I like to fold my flap first and figure it out that way. Okay. 
and I eyeball it and I just kind of use my bone folder and burnish it that way just because if I put it on a scoreboard it's not um, it, it could break easily and I don't want to do that after I worked on my project so I don't want to waste it so get it and align it perfectly well if you have any little pieces like that just trim it that's because when I cut it with the um, tore it off from the packaging it was like that okay so then we have we're left with this now the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna run to your sewing machine and you're gonna stitch around here then open it up stitch this here then you're going to stitch only the top and bottom of your third piece only the top and bottom then you're going to come here you're going to fold it and then you're going to stitch down this way and i'll show you what i mean by that so here's what i mean you're going to stitch here here top and bottom of the third piece and then you're going to turn it around fold it and then you're going to stitch down here and down here okay so we're back and now we have this here now the next thing you're going to do is going to decide what embellishments you're going to use for your envelope I'm going to move some of this stuff out of my way you don't need it anymore and I'm going to use vintage photos from Tim Holtz and this little ephemera that I found in my stuff of embellishments and ephemeras. I'm going to just distress that a little bit. And this is from Tsunami Rose, Daisy Collins. And I'm going to go ahead and distress that as well. Just going around the edges. And I like the distressed look of stuff like that. I'm going to and see if I open it up, the message is in the inside. I'm going to place this here and then this little baby with this tucked on top, just like that. Like so. I think that'll look cute. And of course, we're going to use a button because everything looks so pretty with button like that. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking, and I am going to use some hot glue for this. You can use whatever you want. I just kind of have my hot glue here, and I like my hot glue. And I'm going to go make sure I don't close my flap. And and you can probably use some um, like chipboard to give it a dimensional, like scraps of chipboard. And that kind of gives it a really nice dimensional feel to it. Like that. I just centered it. I did. I better center it now, right? And then on this side, we'll probably put something there to cover the ugliness of that. And I'm just going to use probably. Use this, but that's too wide. And we can use some of this one, which I've used before. So let's go ahead and use that one because I liked it. The problem with these is that they're just so delicate and tiny that you can't tell which one's the right side and which one's the wrong side. I think it goes this way.
I think, at least I hope, right? If not, it's there, right? We'll make do with what we have. Facebook banging over here. Okay, go there. And put that there. And I don't like cutting the little threads from my buttons. I kind of like the character of that. I will try to turn that little knot though. And I have this little piece here. I'm going to put that there with a and a stamp if I find one that's small. There's a couple that are small. That looks good with that color. So we're going to go with that color. Let's just stress it a little. Kind of go there. I like it. I just like the little added touch to it. Notice I don't cut my little threads. I love that look. And again, that's a personal preference. You don't have to do that. I'm not licking these stamps. That's for sure. We are not licking stamps. Okay. So I like it just the way it is, like so. And I'm done with that. And once you open it, you have oops, a side for my little, kind of like that. And I can go in here and probably distress the inside so when you open it, you don't see the ugliness of that there. But I can go in here, hit the little areas that you feel that needed a little bit of touching to make it look more vintage. And that's it. That'll do it. Then you can take all your little pieces and tuck it in there. And that's it, guys. That's how easy it is to create a cute little wax vintage-like envelope. Hope you guys liked this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Until next time, bye.